G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Gonna paint some mangroves over a swamp or a lake, wherever they grow, but it's gonna be night time, but you will see them because the moon will be out, all right? And it'll be shining on the water with some beautiful, lovely moonlit water there. Something very achievable for you beginners to do. So I'll get my sizes up there so those people who want to know how big it is, they can write them down in inches there. And I'll also get some colours going up the screen there. This video is designed for you beginners to watch the whole lot, write the name of the colours down and work out what you're going to need, whether it's the same as what I've used or something similar, and work out what mistakes not to do if I've made any, all right? So come on over here and I'll show you what I've done to this canvas. So I'm going to have my night sky here, the water here, the water's going to be dark and coming lighter here, the way the light from the dark sky is shining on it. And I've just got this taped off so I don't get any mudding up or problems when I'm putting my mangroves in, okay? So this is going to be quite a dark sky. No retarder here. So I'm, to make the paint smooth glide across the canvas, I've just gave it a bit of a squirt and I'll get me put her on a brush. That way it's just a little bit damp, ready to take the night sky. So it's going to be dioxine purple and a hint of black around the edges. So I'm gonna get this just on the tip of my brush there and see how that water's made this scoot across the canvas. Beautiful. So get all this done. Push that up, push it up. I'll put a little bit more water on there. Okay. Never spray, see how the water leaves marks and dots? Never spray that if you've already done part of the painting that you don't want to finish. I can do it here because this is the beginning. Okay. And some of you might have already have come across that problem or issue that you've done before. So no retarder in this one. Nice dark sky. I'm pushing it where I want it everywhere. This good putter on a brush is great for getting it around. Now I'm going to stroke it left and right, left and right, left and right like that. Now I haven't washed the brush, I'm just picking up the black because I just want the tops and the corners darker now. So I'll come across the top crisscross the corner, crisscross the corner. It can radiate down into some of that dioxine. Okay, everywhere I want it. Now I've got to use the tip edge of this brush and stroke that. And that way I've got black going into dioxine purple. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of glare just at the top here. I've cleaned me putter on a brush and I've given it a severe flogging so all the water's out of it. And I just want to put some craft white. Notice how I'm putting it on my putter on a brush. Just to the tips there. I haven't got it all the way up here. And there's the top of me tape. So I want to start from there and bring it into that dioxine purple without it drying. So I'm going to start bringing that up because I just want the faintest bit of glare in that dioxine purple nothing too harsh just the slightest glare and that dioxine is a little bit getting dry so i've got a window to hurry up on well i've got to hurry up before my window closes that's okay now i'm going to wipe that brush and quickly just blend the rest of that in i'm just getting rid of that line there we go just something like that and stroke it to a finish okay so uh, I'm going to use some big words here now and I hope they make sense the essence of the sky was created with the incorporation of our dioxine black and a bit of white at the bottom there okay and now I want to put the night stars in so I've got some water there and I've got my craft white I've got a flat toothbrush and I'm just going to put that in the water and now start bringing the craft white into there because you want it reasonably inky but not too inky and just some subtle subtle stars
done. That'll do it, no more than that. And now that's done, I'll pull the tape off here and then I'll get rid of any ridge of paint that's on my horizon line there. And I'll just do that by using the end of my finger there. This is why I like wearing gloves too. I don't mind getting all the bits and pieces on my hands because I can just peel these off and throw them in the bin at the end of the day. See, I've got sometimes I do this because in my earlier days I used to peel the tape off and finish the painting, and I've got this line of paint there. So now we're ready to do the next section. All right, back down to the palette here. And I've got some turquoise and French ultramarine blue, okay? And I've just sprayed some water on my leftover black and dioxine, because that's gonna be our watercolor. So I want the dioxine purple, but I want a bit of black, real dark. Mainly 80% dioxine and probably 10% black, just to get our water going there. The bottom half of my canvas is dry. Remember how I sprayed the top? Well, I want to do that to the bottom half now. But before I do that, I don't want any dots of water getting onto my sky. Otherwise, it'll turn it into snot. So I've just got some kitchen proof paper here. And I'm just going to cover up my sky. Where are we? Somewhere about there. Just so I don't get any water droplets on there when I spray the bottom because it's going to help the paint glide across the bottom like it did for the sky, remember? So there we go. That's just to... Whoa, don't go under there. That's it. That's all I needed that for. Wasn't a lot, was it? I'm working in sections. So now I've got that dioxine purple and the black. There's me, I've drawn in my horizon line there, and I want this black to about here. Well, the dark color. So that water, you will see how it's going to, the water I sprayed onto the canvas, a bit more black into there. There we go. It's gonna make the, what do you call it? Mangroves stick out at night time with the moonlight on them. So about there, and I'll fade it down to about there. Now I've got to wash this brush because I'm going to use it again for the turquoise. Now the turquoise can be a bit brighter than the black dioxine colour, so I'm just going to prime that other area with some craft white. So I'll just start at the bottom here, get all this white because I need some merging of this. Get that going up to the purple there. Just like that. Now what I don't want in this, when I put the um, turquoise on, I don't want a light band in the middle of it. I want it a beautiful transition. So I'm gonna just wipe that brush, pick up my turquoise, and bring it down to the area where I want it to stop, which is just before the bottom of the canvas. So about, here, I'll get it in the middle there. And this is gonna be darkened up with some of that French ultramarine. Now I want to get this about there to about there. Get it to that dioxine without getting a white line in the middle of it. There we go. Now careful bringing that down into here. You don't want to do that too much, okay? So we'll, I'm going to get the brush on its edge and just kind of distort that transition area up. Because see that dioxine's got no craft white under it. So it's going to be a, there we go, just something to distort it, crisscross it, take your time, sideways number eights. There we go, I'm gonna wipe that because it's got a lot of snot on it. And stroke this, there we go. Now, you can pick up some dollops of that French ultramarine and get some scallops into that turquoisey color. Just actually put them on like that. That'll do it, don't overthink it. Wipe your brush. And then just, that's what that craft paint underneath is gonna allow this to do, watch. Just merge those so you've got some depth in there. There we go, beautiful. I 
I will get some more of that dioxane because I'm not quite happy with the way, there we go. I just want that dark coming down into that a bit better than what it looks there. It's too much of a line. There we go. Pull it, pull it lineal, that's it, in cahoots with the horizon line. Okay, I've washed that brush and gave it another severe flog and that way it's ready to have some new colour on it, which is the yellow ochre. Yellow oxide or yellow ochre, same, similar, same, same, but different. And I've got some burnt umber down there as well, just so I can give this colour some of its darkness as well. So we want to get this up to that turquoise and then just start bleeding it through there as well. Just like that. Turn your brush sideways and stroke it. Beautiful. That's it. Pick up some of the um, burn umber. We've just put that burn umber onto the yellow ochre there. I've wiped that brush. Now while it's still wet, you just want to sink them down. Wipe your brush because I'm picking up bits and pieces. There we go. That's our water. Now before our water gets too dry, I'm a bit worried about this colour here. I just want to put a moon with a pouncer in the sky. So I'm just going to grab some white, titanium white, dance it with a bit of the craft white because that's a lot more runnier. Give yourself a subtle moon in the sky. I want it about here somewhere. Give it a bit of a twist. Stamp it on. Give it a bit of a twist. There we go. Bloody bright moon, that one. Now I'm going to pretty much come here and then come all the way down there like that. Boom. Grab my putter on a brush. Well, I'm just going to grab another blending one because that's contaminated. And waterlate that. There we go. So grabbing that toothbrush and the water next to the craft white, just so as we can get some shimmer onto our lake surface there. And I want to pretty much get it here where the moon reflection is. So across there like that. And let's start bringing it out here. I'm concentrating it, keeping it very condensed, big word that one, in the middle of that band that I put there. This is just simple. You can detail the edge of this water whichever way you want, really. There we go, that'll do it. I'm just grabbing my finger. I've put a little bit of um, dioxine into that white there, probably want a little bit of black noctioxine, just to make a bit of a grey sort of, I don't know, where are we? Get it out there. I'm just distorting that stamped on moon bits, just so it would look a bit more moony. Okay, because sometimes when you do these with a sponge, nine times out of 10 they work good, but if they don't, just make them a bit more moony with your finger. Let's see what a bit of white just does cracking on top of that like a, a subtle but effective highlight here and there. Yeah, there we go, look at that. It's just simple moony. Now I've given that a dry, the top and the bottom here, so I can put in my mangroves without any headaches and without any mudding up. This next part is easy. I've got the top brush to do the top area and a flat brush to do the bottom area. I've just got a, a um, flat, and I don't know what size it is, but it's that size there. You can see by the size of my hand. I haven't got a tape measure on me at the moment. Uh, I've got a flat for the bottom and a filbert, um, hog bristle filbert for the top area. So we just want to map in our um, mangrove area, all black, very easy. So if you've got a bullshit stick, you can use it here. Keeping that reasonably level for the horizon line, 
uh, you want this paint reasonably inky but not too watery and you want a nice straight line across here for the horizon line the bottom area okay take your stick away thicken that up so you've got something to paint down to this is just simple black simple black and that's why I've got no retarder in this painting you'll notice because I haven't got a sky that needed a lot of heavy blending no clouds uh, so hence I don't need the retarder it's not like oh, I'm not using it anymore I still love using it on my detailed skies that I do in acrylic so I'm just going to get the bottom area effectively gently mapped in like that and then I'm just going to swap with the hog bristle and pick that up on both sides of the brush and I want to map it in like so and get the tops tree like canopy like up there in just into that purple now you can see why I've made that bottom part of the sky a bit glary and bright so it'll pick up all this darker tree sitting in front of it okay so I've gone sort of up and down up and down to give a different row of um, mangroves there and see I'm just putting the odd one up there into that brighter lighter color of the sky and all this will be mapped down full on black okay you can stroke it downwards just finishing it off here and I don't know for those people first time here it's always good to have your mountains and tree foliage and anything coming up off your painting don't ever bring it down and finish it down on a downward movement always have it upwards going up or out of your painting because it just sort of slopes everything down into the middle of the canvas and it's pretty much where you want your eyes drawn now I'm going to dry that. Now I've got my burn umber and some of this craft white. Okay, we want to. I'll do it over here. I'll just pull a bit of burn umber in there because I want to get the colour of my mangrove mangrove trunks. And I'm going to see what a bit of yellow ochre does here as well. Yeah, that's pretty much the colour I want. Now I've put some masking tape here just so as I can go willy-nilly from the tape and you want to get these as skinny as possible. Okay, you're just crisscrossing all these down and work out what liner brush is going to work for you. I've just switched over because I'm finding this one seems to be working all right. Now what I'm doing, I'm putting it on and I'm twisting that brush. As I pull it up because I love the little points that I'm getting on some of these okay now this is time consuming bring some over like so now use your brush coming from the top down to the bottom if it's easier for you everyone paints different everyone has different habits I started coming from the bottom up but I'm finding now that it's probably a bit more controlled and easier using the brush from the top now coming from the top down it's up to you work out what's going to work for you just so long as you get all these go and look up mangroves under images in google just to get an idea what they look like that's what i'd done before i painted this i just was pretty sure that i'm painting mangroves okay i've done as much as i can with those see they're they're not all of the same height there's a few gaps in between they're sort of up and down the way nature throws everything on the ground it's not even and perfect okay now let's carefully take this tape off and if you've got any little bits like i have there just emulating under the thing there like it has you can grab a flat and just pull them down because it's just the minutest bit of reflection there in the water but there's not an overly lot there so don't feel that you need a lot because the moon's on the other side of this the light source so there's not much of a light source there uh, where's my black using that same little flat brush I'm grabbing some black now 
and I'm going to naturize the bottom of that now so they don't look like they're floating on top of the water. Okay, so where the bottom of this black was, you want to go from there again and just darken up little bits, just feather it through an uneven but a level line of black here, okay? Just use the corner of the brush as well if you have to, just to, this is just fine bullshit detail but it, a beginner can do it. And if you're shown how to do it, you can do it. Where if you're just shown a simple stamping way, you're learning, but there's people out there that's learnt beyond that now and you can just add these little flavors to your painting. Okay, you can just see what that's done there. It's just added a bit of shadow. Now we're gonna use the forest green and just put these colors in and this painting is done but this color that I'm putting on now that's what's going to make this thing pop so I'm back to my filbert what I did the top of that black shadow with and I've got cadmium yellow light forest green and burn umber so I'm going to grab some of this burn umber just so we can get that dead golden caramel wood looking color so I'm going to grab me forest green I'll put a little bit of that in there just to turn the lights on on it it's a little bit on the dark side just so it'll stand up against that black paint and you want to start at the top we'll get some of this go a little bit above that black just a little bit okay leave some black in there okay and come down I'll do a bit here just so you get an idea what I'm trying to say now these are distant they're not that close so it's all right We want some we want this coming just to there like that and where we've got some gaps like I said before nature throws everything on the ground like we've got a gap over here see like here for instance so you can probably have when you're going along you're creating the canopy you know there's bits of dark areas there and you can probably bring another bit now all the way in front of that gap see like that and just break it up a bit so it's not an even stamped wave of green all on that black. Come down to those trunks there. Like I said, a little bit above that black. Don't have the black showing like that at the top. You need to get your paint and have it just bypassing that black okay just like that condition your brush as you load it with paint so chisel the edge up that's what I mean by condition your brush come down to your trunks there I want to bring something into this gap here right there mixing it up a bit because we're going to have some dead color in here that's going to break it up put bushes back and in front of each other and we're going to have some bits of highlight as well to give it its 3D dimensional look. All right. Dribble some down there, not too much. All right, we've done all that green. Now I've dried that and I want to pick up this dead color now. It's important to have this color in there. Get a bit of water with it so it'll transfer. All right. And you don't want to be too mental with this one. Just get some of this put some on like I'm doing now just very sparingly have a look at it and if you feel it's not showing enough put a bit of white in there like I did there I've just grabbed a little bit of white and put in there okay and we're just wanting the tops of this done here and there that's not too white, is it? I hope it is actually. That's a bit too white, so I'm just darkening it back down again with some more yellow and brown. And there's just little pockets within the valleys of this. Not too much. Because this will be sunk back with the highlights of the green. Practice these stamping 
strokes that I'm doing now on paper to get them right so when you're putting them into a painting you already know how to execute the movement maybe a bit of dead nonsense there that's it okay now we've got our yellow here so let's grab that and just gingerly put it into that green don't overdo it because you can otherwise lose all your yellow that you're going for okay mix that up I've given it a dry now I want in front of there starting so it's setting those dead ones back don't go everywhere with this okay just highlight the bits that need highlighting <laughs> I suppose like that well that's a bit bright I'll darken it down with a bit more green in there don't want it too loud <clears throat> just a subtle change not too bright if anything you're leaving that burnt well not burnt but um, dead undergrowth color at the back side of it all still looks a bit too yellow so I'll start I'm adding more green as I go just subtle that bits coming all the way down where did that gap go oh, here it is here it's absolute leave the dark bits at the bottom come in there that's going to come all the way up to there a little bit there come in there Just gingerly, randomly highlight all that stuff. They are looking a bit all the one way, so I want to change some of them coming this way now. Just to break that up so they look like V's. There we go. I will... Um, darken that area that I did previously when I'm finished and the main thing is you keep some black at the bottom of this green foliage I'm just grabbing some of the green and sitting some of that loud yellow down again now I've got my little script line I've just got that paint a little bit more yellow not too much but I'm just putting detail-y um, mangrovey type leaves in the distance there in bits and pieces here you can see what I've done previously I'll just show you once I do a bit here See what I've done there, just to give it that, this here looks like forest, but I want it to get that mangrove kind of leaf foliage look. So that's why I'm adding these minutest little dots everywhere. Keep go This is time consuming, but it's bloody worth it to put it into your paintings because your painting's going to outlive you. And you want whoever in generations to come to look at your painting and go, well, this artist put a lot of work and time and pride into that work nothing has to be rushed so just going to do this all over and step back and have a look and if there's any bright loud bits we'll just tone them down with a bit of darker green back over it okay all right I'll just sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it okay so make sure you check out my links in the description below become a member of my art group there's the links are all there answer the free questions to come in and say that you saw me on YouTube so I know you came from me and all my art is for sale it helps support my YouTube channel here and I want to thank all my patrons who support me every month <laughs> okay let's put this frame on there and see how she looks yeah that ain't too shabby is it eh 
beautiful moonlit mangroves over a swamp or a lake or wherever. They, I think they grow in swamps, but it's quite a neat looking swamp anyway. Uh, we've got the dark sky, some stars up there, and just the water going out. Just remember, you can do that, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this exercise for beginners. Even advanced beginners can put their take on this as well. We're never too old to learn something, are we? And if you like what I'm doing, make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.